Thanks for being a part of another study in the book of Acts. Today we're in Acts 13, so go ahead and get your Bible open. And while you are, I want you to think about something that's a favorite product of yours. Maybe it's a type of coffee, or maybe it's a type of shoe, a movie, something that you really love. And think about, how did you hear about it? Well, with the gospel, how did you hear about that? For me, it was a lot of different sources. I had an aunt that loved Jesus. I had a friend at high school that had a really passionate love for Jesus. And these different sources at different times stirred up an interest a hunger, a wondering in me about who Jesus is. And today in Acts chapter 13, we're going to be looking at Paul's and Barnabas's first missionary journey and all of uh, the people that they met along the way and stirred a hunger in those people, a wondering about Jesus. Uh, there are some strategies that we can learn out of Acts chapter 13. The first one is to sow the news about Jesus broadly. Let people know who he is to you and what he's done in your life. I remember a woman in Pittsburgh that was a mentor of mine. Even when she was at the grocery store, if someone would talk about not much is free anymore she'd say oh you're right but can i tell you about the best free thing ever grace is free jesus loves you that much that he would die to give you grace wherever she was when an opportunity came up mrs okonski would share her faith and so for you and I, let's sow the news about Jesus broadly. And then another thing we can learn out of chapter 13 is that spiritual model multiplication happens. This believer has a life change and tells another believer. And they tell two more believers. And those two tell four more believers. And it, it causes multiplication of the gospel message. The third really important principle that we learn in Acts chapter 13 is to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. So let's dig in. Let's dig in. And please notice as we read this how you see the Holy Spirit leading this early church. We're going to start in Acts 13 and read verses 1 through 6a. When Barnabas and Saul had finished their mission, they returned from Jerusalem, taking with them John, also called Mark. And now in the church of Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, and they brought to get who was brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. And while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I've called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. And the two of them, sent on their way by the Holy Spirit, went down to Lucia and sailed from there to Cyprus. And when they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. John was with them as their helper, and they traveled through the whole island uh, uh, until they came to Pathos. So, here they are, these first missionaries, spreading the seed widely. It says they traveled through the whole island, 
reaching whoever they could with the message of Jesus. And as they um, travel in what's now Turkey, we see that um, they have some strategies that we can use today. There's a diversity of places that they go to communicate the gospel. They had a habit of starting in the synagogue because they knew that the Jewish believers had a reverence for God. They knew that they had heard of Jesus and that they could complete the message of Jesus' resurrection and the new life he offers. Then they would take the message to whoever would listen. Hey, it's, that's a good reminder to us. Let's not pre-decide who is ready to hear the message. Only God knows that. Let's share the message freely. I remember Doris Adams, a friend and a worshiper in this, in this congregation, telling me that when uh, someone at work shared with her the gospel of who Jesus is and that she could be saved, they invited her to come to church. And when she came to church, uh, she f saw someone else that she knew. And she said to them, why didn't you ever tell me about Jesus? And that person said, I didn't think you were the kind of person who would be open to hearing about Jesus. Sometimes we have to be careful not to prejudge who we think is open and who is closed, but just share. Share the reality of who Jesus is in our lives and be willing to spread the word, spread that seed broadly. So here they are um, being led by the Holy Spirit they had set apart time to worship the Lord and to fast, to pray together. And as they're doing this, the Holy Spirit spoke to someone's heart, set apart for me, Saul and Barnabas, for the work that I've called them to. And that's a powerful reminder to us today that it's his work and that we desperately need the Holy Spirit to lead us. Let's go on and read a little more about this in 6b on through 12. There on Paphos, they met a Jewish sorcerer and a false prophet named Bar-Jesus, who was uh, an attendant of the proconsul Cyrus Paulus. The proconsul was an intelligent man sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. But Elamus, the sorcerer, for that's what his name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from faith. But Paul, who was uh, Saul, who was also called Paul, was filled with the Holy Spirit. I just want you to uh, hear that again. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was able to give him some insight about this sorcerer. He looked straight at Elamis and said, You are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery, and you'll never stop provide pro will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? And now the hand of the Lord is against you, and you will be blind for a time, not even able to see the light of the sun. And immediately mist and darkness came over him, and he groped around, seeking someone to lead him by the hand. And when the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed, for he was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. The Holy Spirit is guiding Paul as he's in this new situation with this person of authority. And he speaks to the man very truthfully uh, that you are full of deceit and trickery. Let's go on in verses 13 on through the rest of the chapter 
you're going to see a pattern that from Paphos, Paul and his companions went to Pergia and Pamphylia, where John left them and returned to Jerusalem. From Pergia, they went on to Poseidon, Antioch, and on the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and sat down. That was their habit. They would enter the synagogue, and when asked, they would teach. And if you look through this chapter 13, it takes you all the way back. In verse 17, the God of our people Israel chose our ancestors, and it takes them through their history in Egypt, in the wilderness, in Canaan, through the judges, the kings, through the promise of a savior, and through John the Baptist and his preaching. And then in verse 26, he says, fellow children of Abraham and you God-fearing Gentiles, it is to us that this message of salvation has been sent to the people of Jerusalem and their rulers, but they did not recognize Jesus. Yet condemning him, they were fulfilling the prophets, the words of the prophets that are read every Sabbath. Though they found no proper ground for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him executed. And when they had carried out all that was written about him, they took him down from the cross and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. And for many days he was seen by those who had traveled with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. And now they are witnesses to our people. And we tell you the good news that what God promised our ancestors, he has fulfilled to us, their children, by raising up Jesus. He goes through their history as a Jewish people and how God had his hand on them, but that it was all to unfold in this new covenant with Jesus. Wow. So the people had invited them to come back Look at verse 42. As Paul and Barnabas were leaving the synagogue, the people invited them to speak further about these things on the next Sabbath. So the next Sabbath in verse 44, it says the almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. But something happened. The Jews in the synagogue, those in authority, were threatened by that, jealous, it, the, that's what Acts says in verse 45. They were filled with jealousy. And listen to what verse 46 says. Paul and, pa Paul, sorry, and Barnabas answered them boldly. We had to speak the word of God to you first, but since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life, now we turn to the Gentiles so that what the Lord command, has commanded us, I have made you a light to the Gentiles that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. I am so thankful for the leading of the Holy Spirit that Paul and Barnabas understood that they, yes, would go to the synagogues, go to the Jews as they traveled, but that their message was meant to go to the whosoever's the Gentiles of this world. And thank God we see the gospel spreading. You saw there in, in chapter 13 that the, almost the whole city had gathered to hear about the Lord. It's amazing that those who, some had believed the gospel on the first week while others were still questioning, but the people who heard Paul's message, they became messengers of the gospel and they invited the others to come back to hear Paul the second time. It reminds me of John 4, 29, where the woman at the well leaves the well and runs to the city and says, come and meet a man who's told me everything I ever did. It's amazing how the change that Jesus makes in our life goes out to impact others around us. Let's never doubt it. 
let's never quiet our voice thinking it doesn't matter. It matters. In verse 49, uh, Luke writes that the word of God spread throughout the whole region. That's so exciting. The people took the word of God and it spread. Uh, those former unbelievers now are new believers and they're carrying the gospel, the message of grace through Jesus, death and resurrection to whoever would listen. And 2 Timothy 2, 2, Paul says this, the things that you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust them to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. That's how the gospel spreads. I am changed. I tell you about the change that Jesus has made in my life. You open your heart to Jesus. You are changed and you tell others. Uh, our obligation isn't just to share the gospel, but also to equip new Christians in the gospel. Sometimes we have to ask ourselves, what motivates me to share the gospel? Let's make a choice to share the gospel freely with our families, our neighbors, co-workers, whoever God has put into our lives. That gospel of Christ will change them. And God will use you powerfully. So I, I love this chapter 13, seeing what God does through the new church and reminding us that it's the same thing he wants to do through you and I. He wants us to spread the news about his grace broadly. He wants us to be led by the Holy Spirit and he wants us also to, um, to have that, see that spiritual multiplication happen where um, you share the gospel message and the person who's changed shares the gospel message with those in their lives. Let's ask the Lord, who is it that we're bumping shoulders with already every day that we can share the message of freedom that we found in Jesus Christ? Thank you.